Thanks for the invitation, and uh, thanks for having me, and thanks for coming when the sun's shining. I know it's really tough. So I want to talk about making things and jumping fences. So here's a picture of a Shrebagan, and I think a lot of the times everybody just stays in their own garden. My whole premise is how can we make data tangible, and how can we make it something you can actually feel? So first I want to talk about attention. So if you think about attention, this is my youngest son, he's four years old. We define ourselves by where we put our attention. So with, for my kids, it's a lot of times it's Lego and it's uh, TV shows when we allow them to watch TV shows. But it, basically, we define ourselves through what we choose to do. And our attention here is data visualization. So as an individual, we define ourselves as individuals. But as groups, we define ourselves through our attention as well. So here's a picture of the um, space shuttle launching in Florida. And everybody that's excited about the space shuttle, they all go and watch this. And, and every, we all define ourselves through, we're big fans of the space shuttle. So if we talk about data, I get data through what we typically do everyday lives. So here's a, 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 a visualization of my iPhone data from last year, basically. So everything we do today produces data. It's basically the pollution or the exhaust or the, the tools that we use today. So Foursquare, Facebook, everything produces data. So data is out there. You just have to use it. So a few experiments I want to talk about is one, it's basically this is face OSC from an artist called Kyle McDonald, and it maps your face. And what I wanted to do is take this data and make it physical. So I mapped it to my face, and I was able to move a servo. So the picture's on the bottom. I'm, I'm basically drawing a circle with my eyebrows. So the more I move my eyebrows, the more the circle moves. Another thing is this is the uh, project that got me the job at Google. This is a, a lamp that sits above our dining room table. And when I'm at home, it sits really low. And when I'm further away, the further away I am, it goes higher and higher. So the kids can see, okay, where is Papa today? And it also rotates in the direction where I am. So they can visually see where I am. Another example is making data um, tangible is this thing called a vinyl killer. Basically, it's, it's a little VW bus that runs on a piece of vinyl, a, a record player, and it kills the vinyl. But what we did is take Twitter and took certain sentiments of Twitter, and it, when they're really negative, so Obama's bad, then it goes slow. And when it's good, it goes 100%. And a future project I'm working on is taking how can I connect my, my bank account to, to something that's tangible. And obviously, everyone knows this idea of tightening your belt when your bank account is low and you don't have any money. So how can I take that real time and create a belt that actually tightens when my wife or someone else is spending too much money? <laughs> so the co consequence basically is being we've gone from newspapers where um, someone like, you know, some that used to fill this room to things that, you know, actually are just this big, and that's a huge consequence. And the consequence is basically all of our attention is focused on the screen. And obviously, that's something we all can relate to. This is not a personal family picture, but it shows pretty much the consequence of what's happening. You have everybody that could potentially be talking to each other. They're all looking at screens, you know, at different things. And it, I think that's, that, that's a huge challenge. I, I don't think it has so much to do with data visualization, because you need the granality, you need the detail. But it becomes a situation where every living room looks like this. Everybody is just focused on the screen, you know. So you see that you can understand where this is going, basically. So what happens when we take all of our attention and focus it just on screens? And that's whole, my whole premise. How can we make data tangible? And I think there's a really fertile area for research there. Um, one example is also the Space Shuttle Challenger, basically. This was launched in 1985. And I was pretty young at the time, and it was kind of a, you know, it was a big, big thing when, because it was the first teacher that actually went, went up to space. But what happened in 86, after they launched, it basically exploded and killed all these astronauts, or the, all the astronauts on board. So as you can imagine, you know, after, the, after launch, there's, there's so many pieces to the puzzle. How do we figure out what actually happened? You know, what was the problem? And it took, it took a long time to figure that out. They set up a committee, and people had to go and you know, talk about what are some, some of the issues that you know, what could have happened. But in the end, they have all these pieces. And as you can imagine, with an explosion, you can't find all the pieces. There was no black box like an airplane. So how do you take all this data? How do you take all this material and actually figure it out? So there's, there's this guy called Richard Feynman. He's a physicist. And what he did, he was able to find out the solution. And what he did is he created a physical data vi uh, visualization of what happened. So it was a little rubber O-ring. So it was a rubber ring that was the cause of the thing. And when he testified, he put it in a glass of water ice water and then took it out and, and the o-ring didn't go back into the sh form it should have and what happened is in the space shuttle challenger it was really cold on launch day and it, so some of the rubber didn't seal and it, it made an explosion but he was able to visualize what was happening so the future for me is actually about making data tangible how can you make it tangible this is my wife and this is my my youngest son 
And this is just showing, you know, kids are interested in screens, obviously, but I think we have to also focus on what's, what's physical, what's the tangible things around them. So it's, I think it's the combination, though, too. So there's a lot of ways to get into this. There's one, this is my oldest son, he's six now. He plays around with little bits, so it's a little, it's like a prototyping platform. It costs, you know, costs a little bit of money, but it's really easy to use, and there's so many tools available. You just have to try these things out. And it's not just for kids. I show a lot of kids here because I have two kids, but it's also for adults. And then another platform that's very popular is Arduino. Arduino is also a uh, prototyping platform. So what, if you could take this data that you guys came up with and make it tangible, what could that mean? It'd be like, for me, it'd be like taking clay and ha actually having data as clay and actually being able to mold the, mold the data. Maybe it's 3D printing stuff, I don't know. So I think the future there is very bright. So as takeaways, I have three takeaways. Um, first, first is you have to manage your attention, not your time. That's really important. A lot of times we think about time slots, but actually you have to think about where your attention is and not so much the time, and that's really key. Second is seek different perspectives. I know this, this happens a lot in, in agencies and in companies. We all are the same people that, you know, we all have the same interests. You have to find people that have different perspectives, and that's where you become, that's where you get to something new. And thirdly, you have to get your hands dirty. To really understand what data means and data visualization and prototype and stuff, you have to try these things out, and, the, and it's really easy. Thanks.